start doing with the legislative function, legislative, political, regulated, re uh, regulatory function of the association. So um, you'll be able to be uh, up to date and current on everything that the association is going to be involved in this uh, 120 days for this 120 day session. Now, right now we're looking in front of you or what's right in front of you is our announcement that we've been sending out here for oh I would say probably close to a month about our double feature that's coming up next Wednesday February 3rd we are trying something brand spanking new at 2 o'clock we are doing an A at the Capitol now what does that mean to everybody that means that we are going to be in the Colorado Capitol building on the second floor in the old Supreme Court room and we are going to do training about the political, legislative, and regulatory processes that we're all involved in. And um, that will go from two to five. We are going to have some surprise guests who are going to be there. You, we are going to have lots of training materials for everybody that has signed up. And uh, I think you'll find that the first part of this uh, um, program is going to be extremely exciting. Um, to cap it off then, after we get done at 5 o'clock, we're going to run down to the Colorado Automobile Dealers Association down there at 290 Spear Boulevard. and. Uh, we're going to, we've got our legislative reception uh, for two hours. Now, we have over 20% of the Colorado legislature, that's senators and representatives, coming to that reception. And we want to have a great showing by our membership, so um, we, need, uh, we need a bunch of people down there. And I would encourage you, if you haven't signed up for this dynamic program yet, there's still time. You can go online and sign up. Um, you can even do it Monday morning. You can do it Saturday morning. You can do it Sunday morning when you're sitting in your pajamas. But the important thing is we want you to sign up. We want you to participate. We're providing you with great education. And we're going to let you feel when everything is all said and done, you are going to feel a lot more comfortable with participating in the political, legislative, and regulatory process. It's just going to be very exciting. So mark it down and um, um, put it in the old date timer and we'll see you there. It'll be cool. So like I mentioned earlier, this is one of, uh, of many webinars that we're going to be doing in the legislative spectrum. I think we're going to do, what, what do we decide we're going to do, Peter? Maybe one every two weeks? Yeah, one every couple of weeks, I think, to see, keep everybody so updated on what's going on. Way in which we were going ahead. Yep. Exactly. So as we go through this one today, folks, all of you listeners out there, we would love to get your input back. You know, what did you like? What did you think we really did well? What did you think could use improvement? Um, what would you like to hear more about? What didn't we talk about? I mean, all those types of things. This is your program. We want to make it useful to you so that you can be the top-notch administrator and executive for your assisted living home. So what you're looking at right now is our Colorado Assisted Living uh, Legislative Status Sheet. Now, you can go online to our uh, website and click to this page and this page is tied directly to the Colorado legislature so that uh, anything that we're tracking that we're monitoring, we're supporting, we're not supporting is automatically updated in real time so it doesn't matter when you go in and check it you will see what is going on. Now it's real easy to use if you look at the far left where it says bill number, and if you can get that over there, right there, bill number on the far left, then you see the bill number, HB 161054. And if you notice, 
That happens to be in blue. Now, if you click that, you can see an original copy of the bill. And you can print the bill out. And you can um, do whatever you want to do with the bill then. But that's how easy it is for you to get legislation um, on what the association is doing. Any part that you would like. Okay, next uh, column there, position, tells what the association's position is. Now, you're asking yourself this. How do we come up with a position? Well, we have a tremendous government relations committee headed up by Clark Greep of Jewel Insurance. And we have six other people that are on that uh, committee. And they go through the bills weekly. Um, and then we take a position on those bills. Um, each week, I update the legislative status report for them to go through and then in turn we all look at all the new bills that have been put on the status report, see if it's really important for us to follow or participate with. If it isn't, we get rid of it. If it is, then we decide just how intense of a position should we take. So that's how we ended up how we end up with our positions. Um, if you'd like to be on the Government Affairs Committee, uh, give us a call and we'll get you on there. So you see their position. Next is cal calendar notification. Now what that tells us is that, Peter, go back to that puppy bud. Which one? Notification. I'll click here. Go back to the status sheet. I want to finish going through there. Yeah, it should be back on there. Right now I'm looking at the website. Okay, where'd it go? Hang on, let me do something. Okay, I don't know what happened, but all right. How about now? Nope. Um let me check something. There we go. There we go, buddy. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking with gas. So anyways, I mentioned earlier the calendar notification right here. This tells you when this bill is going to be heard in committee. So this bill, 1054, which we have decided to monitor, is going to be heard in committee on Thursday, February 4th the day after our legislative uh, day at the Capitol and legislative reception. And it's going to be heard in the Judiciary Committee at 1.30 p.m. and the room number is 271. And it's the very first one on the House calendar, committee calendar. So <clears throat> the next column is a short title. It, it's a very short, tells you exactly what the legislation's about. It's end of life options for terminally ill individuals. Who the sponsors are. Uh, you have to have a sponsor in the House, and you have to have a sponsor in the Senate. This bill happens to be a House bill because it has got four numbers, and it says HB 16. So it's House bill, and it's in 2016, and this is the bill number. The, interest, the fun thing about the House numbers, and it's really easy to use that numbering system to know how you can tell if it is in uh, the House or Senate, all House bills are a thousand or more. So you can see here that it's 1,054. So there's, it's above a thousand, it's a House bill. Now here's a bill summary. Now this bill summary is pretty extensive um, and it's good all the way up until the committee, until the bill is heard in committee. Because once a bill is heard in committee and the committee votes on it, there's a couple things that can happen. <clears throat> the committee can pass a bill without amending it. The committee can pass a bill and amend the bill. The committee can kill the bill. So there's three things that can happen there. So this, the very first time it comes out, this is when this is its most accurate and reflects what the bill is all about. 
But the minute it goes through the first committee and they start making changes to the bill, this is not going to be accurate. So you have to look at the bill and see what new amendments were added to that. Now the status on this bill is the next column where it says most recent status. It was introduced on the very first day of the legislature and assigned to the House Judiciary Committee. And as I said here, it was introduced on the 13th. And that, I think, is all of our columns for um, uh, our legislative status report. So this bill happens to be end-of-life options for terminally ill individuals. We've decided to go ahead and monitor that. If you um, slide down to the next bill, Peter, can you do that for us? Yep. <clears throat> we can run through here and you can see what kind of bills we're looking at and where we are on these things. So if you want to, if you can expand that, I guess it's the 41, I guess I could open that up more. Couldn't I? There we go. Fifty percent. Okay. All right. If you can scan down there for us, Peter, just slide it down. There you go. The next bill is House Bill um, Ten Sixty Five. It's monitor. It's um, it is not on the. Um, calendar hasn't been scheduled. This is income tax credits for home health. And uh, Representative Conti is um, the sponsor of that bill. And it was introduced on the 28th. Um, and as I mentioned, this is, we are monitoring this. All right, next bill, Peter. Should be there. It might be a little delayed on your end, Corky, but it should be good. Okay, our next bill is House Bill. Oh, okay, now I got it now. Okay, it's um, we've got uh, House Bill 1075. We strongly support. This is reestablished the Alzheimer's Association checkoff. So this is on your tax return. If you want to give to the Alzheimer's uh, Association, you can do a little <clears throat> checkoff on your tax bill, and we support that. Next one's 1081. We're monitoring. And this is a absolute, uh, obsolete, obsolete reporting um, from the Department of Healthcare Policy and Finance. This basically is cleaning up the statute. So any obsolete language, things that don't apply and everything, this is more a cleanup bill and we're just monitoring that. All right, slide her on up some more, Peter. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Is it there yet? It's just reacting slowly here on my side. Yeah. No. There we go. Now we're up to the next one where we talk about uh, on uh, 1088, we oppose this bill. This is Fire Protection District impact fees on new development. Well, we all know how we feel about what it costs to um, uh, sprinkler our homes. Well, this is a uh, impact fee on anybody that's got new development. Um, and so we're opposing this. This bill is coming up on the 10th. And so we'll see what happens with that particular bill. Um, um, get it scheduled and just get said. Our next bill. 
You're going to have to slide that one. Okay. And PUC permits automation, I think, is what this one's about. Yep. But I can't see it all the way. Close this one to be associated with it. So keep going, Peter. Get us into the Senate. Slide it down until we get into the Senate. I think that's the last. I think that's the last House bill. Okay, should be there. Hello, Corky. I think you lost. Oh, there we go. Now we're back. I think your connection's a little slow on that. Okay, end. Medicaid transportation providers. That's 1097. Yeah, it's obvious it is. Good golly. And then we also have uh, the next one, House Bill 1101, which we support medical decisions for un unrepresented patients. That's hey. coming up February 11th in health and environment. Again, you can read what's going on there and uh, go from there. Yeah, Peter. Do um, – well, I was going to say, because you're breaking up a little bit, we may need you to call in on the phone line. Did you hear me, Corky? Corky, Corky. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I'm going to text you the number so you can dial in. Peter, are you here? Peter. Yes, Corky. You need to dial in. You're breaking up. I'm texting you the the number, the call in uh, number. Uh, okay. All right, I think Yeah, you keep breaking up on us, so call in on the number. I text it to you. Sorry, guys, on the... So what's the access code, Peter? 841-140-1111. Uh, Sorry, we'll get him back here in a second on the phone. So, okay, hold on. Okay, we're going to try that again.
I think I'm in now, Peter. Much better. I think I'm in now, Peter. Switch on, on your computer. Um, switch it from mic and speakers over to telephone on the audio section. Is that better? Yeah, but you got to turn it off on the computer. There, I got it. It's off. Okay, there you go. Yep, you're good now. Yeah, that's good. All right, dynamite. Sorry about that, guys and gals. That's a bummer. So anyway, we're back down here on uh, Senate Bill 26. We're monitoring. It's not on the calendar. Talks about the personal rights of protected persons. Um, that's something we're all very concerned about. Go ahead and slide down some more, Peter. This one? You know, whatever the next Senate bill is. Should be uh, Senate Bill 16-027. Now, I haven't scrolled up yet. Okay. It will. It's there. Just a little slow on your end. Yeah, really. Really. I, I appreciate everybody's patience. We've only lost one out of the 12, so. <laughs> do appreciate that. Okay, I got a 26, so yeah, we need some more. I wish this would just scroll down in a normal way. It is scrolled down. It's just not on your computer. We, you ought to just oh, bring this okay. up separately and scroll down through it. Everybody else is seeing it. You're the only one that's not. Oh, you want to just open it up in another way? Yeah, you can open it on your computer. Just go to the website and open it, or however you get to it. Okay. And just read through it, and I'll scroll and make sure everybody's caught up on it. I am doing that as we speak. Cool. That'll take out. Any always, it's it's always, it'll always get the bugs out. Like I said, it's, we got to get the bugs out. We'll be good. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get it figured out. Yeah, so what I've got up now is the Senate Bill 16027. Okay. It's, it's slowly coming, getting up here. So. It's just taking its sweet time. That's all I can tell you. Uh, yeah, we're still here, guys. We're just getting things loaded up, so we're in sync. You're just opening it up so you can see it, Cork? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's just forever in a day loading. Are you down at the office? I'm down at the office, yeah. All right. We need to get a faster router. I think that could be very true. Yeah, because I haven't had difficulty like this ever. Somebody's still in our internet. That could be. That could very well be. All right, we're getting there, yay. Okay. All right, here we go. Now we're cooking with gas. All right, awesome. All right, now we're down here 
22, we just got that, uh, we just talked about Senate Bill 26, yep. personal rights to protected persons. Okay, we'll go up to the next one, Senate Bill 27, Medicaid option um, for prescribed drugs by mail. Again, another way we support it because it might reduce costs. Um, we'll know more once it's going to be heard at the committee. It is going to be heard on the same day that we're doing our day at the Capitol, so maybe we'll slide into that committee room there, the Health and Human Services Committee, and let everybody who's in attendance watch what happens to the committee here. And it's number two on the Senate calendar, so um, that would work out very, very slick. Our next one has to do with Senate Bill 76, and this has to do with repealing employment verification standards. As you all know, everybody who hires a person's got to verify, one, they got a social security number, two, that they're not an illegal alien, and all the other stuff that's necessary to prove to the government that these are really citizens of the United States. And so this is going to try to minimize that so you don't have to do as much as you used to. And this is going to be up on February 8th in Business Affairs and Labor. And uh, we are supporting it because anything that can reduce some regulation makes it easier, makes us easier to work with, and we feel better. And then last but not least, we've got our bill that everybody is, uh, has heard quite a bit about. And this happens to be Senate Bill 8, which we strongly support. It's going to the Senate Business Affairs and Labor Committee on the 10th of February. And this is where we are doing continuing competency for assisted living um, administrators and executive directors. And basically what this says is, is that over to you for the two-year period, every administrator or executive director will have an opportunity to go ahead and collect 30 classroom credits or 30 educational credits um, that they'll put in their file and keep with all their other records for their assisted living home um, so that when they do a survey and they check that they see that you are keeping up with your competency. Now this has got nothing to do with saying that you have to recertify as an administrator or an executive director. It just says it's got to, you got to demonstrate that you've been doing some personal education on your part to keep current in your industry. Now that's a lot of different ways that that can be done. If you went to a lecture and you heard somebody talk about assisted living, um, you could use that. If you read a book about assisted living, you could use that. If you went to a conference, you can use all the classes that you went to. If you were listening to a radio show and it was about assisted living, and you recorded that, you could use that. There are numerous ways in which anybody and everybody can go ahead and pick up this uh, uh, education. And at little or no expense. Oh, webinars, don't forget that. This webinar you're doing right here today, that would count toward uh, 30 credits. And so uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very workable, doable piece of legislation. Plus, the bill is necessary because if there needs to be enabling legislation that would allow the Department of, of uh, 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 Health Department to enact appropriate rules and regs to manage this. Because right now in the statute, there's nothing that authorizes them to do continuing competency. So that's our bill on that. We're excited about this. Um, we do have opposition to it. Some people are concerned, um, but I'm not sure that they fully understand what it is that we're trying to do and that it will not have a big effect on everybody as they uh, continue to do their, their uh, job and uh, continue to enhance their professionalism. So that's our part of our status sheet. We update this every week, as I mentioned earlier. So um, I would encourage all of you that are online, spread the word to your colleagues. And uh, you know, every Monday, go to the website and check it out, because it will be updated Monday mornings, and you can see exactly what's going on. All right, a couple things before we close out this. Corky, we did have a couple uh, of questions on that. Do you want to fill a couple of questions? Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, I didn't see that. Go ahead. 
What's, uh, what's one of the questions, Peter? Well, one of the question is um, doing this. So you're doing, you know, getting credits, whatever, through reading the book, etc. How are that? How is that tracked? How is that tracked? Yep. Okay. What that person would do if you read the book, you would uh, take a piece of paper or whatever it is, write down the uh, title of the book, the author of the book, when you read it, and then put it in your folder. This is totally up to each individual. They are responsible for demonstrating that they've met the 30 credits of continuing competency over the 24-month period. What's another question, Peter? Uh, let's see. Um, question, kind of a question, concern, because um, someone could just write it down that they read the book, but they didn't actually read the book, but they wrote it down and stuck it in the file. That's absolutely correct. But we figure that we're working with professionals here, and, uh, you know, that's it. We're not... This is not designed to penalize or hurt people. This is designed to help them expand their education, take advantage of all methods, modalities, um, ways in which to maintain your, your um, education level in the management of an operation of assisted living homes. Do you, um, the 30 hours, why is it 30 hours versus something else? Where would that number come from? The 30 hours for the assisted living, uh, for that over the two-year period came from our sponsor, uh, Senator Martinez Humanic. Um, she is the one who wanted that, um, and, uh, we thought that that was a pretty good, uh, compromise and uh, went ahead and supported that with her. Okay. Any other questions? Um, let's see. Uh, just a comment, I guess. I guess there's 10 states that have assisted living, continuing education. I don't know what those numbers are. Uh, you know, I, I think that I think that's probably the minimum. I think there's more out of the 50 states. I do know that all the states surrounding us have um, uh, continuing competency plus um, stricter entry requirements than Colorado. Oh, on the uh, so front-end training? On just front-end uh, requirements before you can qualify as an administrator or an executive director. Schooling. Our, 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 um, our minimum requirements are just that, very minimal. Yeah, so right now we just have the 30-hour <laughs> course. Is there other – well, I don't know all the requirements. I'm probably not the one to – well, there's one, like, for instance, I believe it's Washington. Washington requires, like, uh, 75 credit hours over a two-year period continually in continuing ed. Gotcha. So it's really all over the board. Again, we're not trying – this is just a beginning. This is just to help our people maintain their professionalism and help them manage their assisted living homes and demonstrate to their residents that they're committed to running the best assisted living home possible. So, um, I mean, this is a, this is a win-win for everybody. So, um, well, I guess we don't know. Is the state going to issue some type of certificate that says they've completed no, no this? No, certificates. No, nothing. Okay. All it's going to be is when you have your survey, one of the things on their checklist is that I want they're going to say, I want to see your file folder, and I want to see everything that you've done 
to show us that over a two-year period you got 30 credits of education, of continuing competency. That's it. So there's no fines. There's no. Uh, there's no recertification. There's none of that. Any others, Peter, before we uh, close out? Um, the, I think that's all the questions, some comments I'll pass on to you. Okay, great. Well, folks, anyway, we're coming to the end, and I wanted to talk about just one more thing because I, I need – I want to – ask for your help and that is that I want you to take out your day timer or if you're sitting at your well obviously you're sitting at your computer and go to your uh, go to your calendar and stuff and I want you to mark down on April 27th and 28th that this is the Cala Spring Conference and we're going back to the Ameristar Hotel Casino back up to Black Hawk, Colorado. And if it's any indication of how well that was received when we did it in the fall, we had record-breaking attendance. We had record-breaking um, exhibitor participation. We had record-breaking sponsorship participation. This one will be another sellout. And so I want everybody to put those dates down. Watch for the um, the uh, uh, information as to when you can register. We got great room rates. We got ninety nine dollars a night. Can't beat it. Ninety nine dollars. And um, and what better time to be up in the mountains in the springtime? Golly, it's gonna be wonderful. Oh, and I will tell you this: we're doing something a little different, everyone. And this will be cool. And a lot of people ask us about this, but one of the things we're doing on our opening day, on the 27th in the afternoon after we do a little uh, education, we are going to have all the registrants that are there for that first day, if they choose to do it, we're doing a tour, a backroom tour of the Ameristar Casino, so you'll get to see just how a casino works, how they switch out dealers, how they collect money, how they count money, how do they get new equipment. How, I mean, everything you could imaginable, you're going to find out the, the, what happens in the uh, bowels of the casino. Sounds like a good time, and then in that evening, we're going to have the uh, exhibitor partner uh, cocktail reception, which was a blast last fall. un freaking believable We had a ball. So anyway, mark those dates down. Uh, watch your emails and your fax machines for our next legislative webinar. Please send in your thoughts about uh, you know what happened. And trust me, we got the technical things. We know that. We'll make those changes. But if there's other topics or other things that you'd like to talk about, let us know so we can we can take care of that for you. Thanks very much. Have a fantastic weekend. Stay out of snow on Sunday and Monday, and go Broncos. We're out of here. Thank you, guys.